Howdy, folks. So just the other day, I was speaking with someone about, you know, plotting data on a map, and like spatial data and, and things like that. And immediately I thought of um, the ArcGIS map control in Power BI. Uh, so we know that there are map controls the out-of-the-box map controls in Power BI, and they're pretty phenomenal, right? So they, they show lots of things, lots of interesting things, um, but they're, they're somewhat limited in functionality. Uh, and uh, and that's where the ArcGIS map control is like, it's really awesome because it really takes things to the next level and uh, you can you can do some, some crazy things with it, uh, especially if you have like good uh, good data. Uh, so I, I thought, you know, and also I, I showed it to some of my coworkers and I think they got excited and uh, uh, seeing their excitement, I thought, you know, I'll just like make a video. Uh, so, um, so, so this is the RGIS map control by S3, right? So it's available in Power BI for free and uh, I definitely recommend it. I'm going to show you how to use it. Uh, but before I, before I jump into that, uh, just to give you, uh, I've created kind of a story in that I, so what I did was I went to Nice Rides website. Um, and for those of you who are not in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, Nice Ride is the, like the bike, bicycle share program here in uh, in, in the city. And uh, so, you know, basically you just like go to a bike station, you pick up a bike, just like this person over here, and you ride it to your destination and you leave it there and then you walk away, right? So, so it's that system. And so I, I went to their website and I, I looked for some data and, you know, I just downloaded the 2017 data and uh, it, it's basically, it looks like this. It has a, you know, it's basically the number of rides that happened in 2017. And uh, uh, so the way, where the ride started, where it ended, how long was the ride, etc. So I thought, you know, let me use this data. It's simple data. It's fairly simple, but I think it, it gives a lot of, um, it, it, it can do, uh, the map control can do lots of great things with this data. So uh, on that note, let me just get into my Power BI here. So, you know, I have my blank report and uh, my tea is getting cold. So on this uh, on this blank canvas, I will drop the, um, the RGIS map control right here. Okay, so there is that. Um, and then I will add, let's say this, start latitude and the start longitude okay and now it will plot those points on the map right nothing special here the other out of the box power bi control also does that uh i keep calling it out of the box you know i guess this is also out of the box but the other map control this one right here uh it's just called map um so yeah, so we have all these points here you know nothing special We've seen this before up. So the other thing that I'll do here is uh, I will add total duration to the size so that, you know, bigger the size of the circle, the longer the duration was of the ride. Okay, there's that. Again, nothing special. We've seen this. Um, another extra thing that I'll do is uh, I'll say account type color so that we can just like differentiate between two types of members, I believe. So there's account type is member and casual, right? So that's what we are looking at here. Um, so, you know, so what's so special about it? We'll, we'll soon find out. So where it gets really interesting is uh, if I go into these ellipses and I click edit, that's where it gets in, into like a designer mode and it gives you various options. Okay, so, and just so you know, I'm using the free version of the map control. Uh, you can be paying for it as well if you're a paid member. Uh, you pay five dollars per user per month, and uh, you get lots more options, right? So, for example, the the base map or the the map template. And the free version gives you four types of maps. Um, the the paid version gives you lots more, right? So it's things like that, right? So even though uh, this so this free version it gives you. A few things, not everything, but a few things. But even these few things are pretty substantial, pretty phenomenal. Um, so the first thing I'll do here is I'll switch to my dark gray canvas because I really like it. And the other uh, map control does not have this. So I think this looks very slick and it's just like, it's a nice contrast, you know, so you can clearly see, um, 
the, the the data points versus like if it were lighter i think it's it's not as easy easy to see the data points the dark one really like uh makes them stand out right so that's why i like the dark so i change that uh the map theme you know so you can do um heat maps um and i i like this heat map better to be honest than the other map control uh, but again there's no difference here right so from a fun function perspective uh, you get a heat map uh, you size we've seen this before um, size and color what's what's different here and something industry interesting is the clustering right so it also gives you the count of whatever it is so you know from this point you can see that 171 trips originated uh, 24 50 etc so this is a nice like way of just summing them all up and also visually seeing where they were so clearly this is a this is an this is a, a popular uh station for picking up bikes um so here i'm gonna switch back to size and color uh, you can also do like so we used to circles from the other map control but you know you can do squares as well um and then you know change transparency and whatnot uh or diamond i don't like diamond so much square is all right uh, i think but for this one circle is still fine um but where it gets really really interesting and fun is this right here um i'll start with reference layers so so right now our data is bike trips data right um now let's say we want to uh you know so let's say we have a marketing exercise where we want to target a certain uh, uh demographic to sign up for a bike ride program or something like that right so how do we get that data who how do we know who these people are okay so um i can add a reference layer here and so this what this does is it gives me the ability to add more data to the map in, in the form of a layer so you know you can see that there's average household income and uh, household size, diversity, etc. So if I choose the household income map <clears throat> or layer, you can now see that it adds adds this layer here, and it's it will now start to tell me the um, the average income in in these areas, right? So oh, was is, was it average or median? I don't remember. We'll find out soon. And, you know, so the darker the color, the higher the income is. So now as I zoom in here, I can also like click in any of these areas. And it, it will tell me what the income is in that specific region. And I don't know if it's zip code or but I, I, I cannot tell what that box is. Uh, I'm assuming it's zip code or block group. Sorry. Yeah, it is a block group. Um, so, you know, it tells you that in this block group, it's the average household income is $163,000 uh, and the medium, median income is 83000 right? The U.S. average is 77000 So, uh, So we know that, you know, the fairly wealthy people live here. Um, we can also see somewhere here, for example, right? So here the income is lower and uh, it's 67000 and 40000 respectively. And it also gives you like more statistics, right? So um, like if you want more information, you can go into the chart here as well. Um, similarly, if I want to see like uh, diversity, for example, like if, if we are planning to reach out to a diverse uh, audience, uh, you know, where do they live? And so um, we're clearly not here. So this is all like, not very diverse right so and we can find out we can validate that by yeah okay so this one is 24 percent diverse and who are these people okay um predominantly caucasian and then a little bit of asian and then some you know uh multiple races non-hispanic hispanic etc right so so that's that population and if we click here though it should be something totally different right so this is 92 percent diverse uh who are these people uh, it won't bring up oh there we go okay so it's you know african-americans and 
Um, is it because of my map? But anyway, you get the idea, right? So hey, let's try this again. You know, so okay, Hispanic and uh, white and uh, so on and so forth. Right? So the idea is that you are getting intelligence from uh, from these layers and you don't even have to worry about the data. You don't have to bring it in. Um, you don't have to go scavenge for it out there. You don't have to buy it from anywhere. Um, you just add a layer and it gives you this extra information as well. Um, another very interesting, okay, let, let me, before I get into drive time, uh, let's do infographics as well. So this, it gives you the ability to add some like standard numbers to your map. Okay, so uh, I can add total population in my current view and, uh, you know, Okay, total households, population with gender, etc. And then, of course, if I uh, zoom in, the numbers change, right? So, so you can do all of that. Just like if you if you're looking for numbers, you can do do that right from here. Uh, another handy, very handy feature, right? Okay. So, and then uh, the last thing I want to show is the drive time. This is very, very, very interesting and very cool, actually. Uh, not like a cool, cool, but like actually cool and amazing and very useful. Uh, so what drive time does is it tells you from a certain location what area you can cover, right? Uh, and the area can be in terms of miles or in terms of like uh, minutes. So now, you know, when it comes to nice ride, all these bikes are hauled by someone in a truck, right? So, uh, and, and so let's say in, in our example here, let's say Nice Ride wants to set up new stations, but they don't want the driver, the, the drivers to drive for more than 15 minutes. Okay, otherwise they'll just spend too much time driving and being stuck in traffic and whatnot. So for those reasons, what we can do is, so let's say um, from here, we wanna see what area we can cover in 15 minutes, right? So I will choose uh, yeah, so drive time and then let's say this is 15 minutes and I hit OK. And now it tells me that from that location, I can cover all of this area. Um, so again, visually, I can see that. All right. OK, maybe I don't want to go anywhere here because probably it's it's not a biker friendly. Uh, those are not biker friendly areas, right? Uh, whereas here we we are seeing more uh, more of the action, so maybe we can set up something here. Uh, and clearly you can see that it's this one is a diverse neighborhood. So maybe let's set up another station here, and then an, another one here, another one here, right? So just visually, first of all, you know that okay, this is the area that can cover that can be covered in 15 minutes, and then uh, visually you can see where we can uh, set up some stations. Um, another use case can be, so, you know, you're, you're trying to, so this is like, let's say your office or your headquarters or whatever, and then uh, you want to set up a new distribution center and uh, you want the distribution center to be a certain uh, distance from a location because again, you wouldn't want your drivers to spend too much time or there can be many other reasons. So uh, this can show you where your new location can be. Um, and, you know, so maybe you can set up something around here because land is cheap and, you know, setting up a distribution center is easy there and things like that. Um, so, yeah, that's the kind of information that you can get from the Esri RGIS map. So clearly you can see that, you know, so of course it plots information on a map, you know, just like a map control. Uh, but then it's also doing all these like, different things that the other map control does not give you. So if you if you really like if you have a lot of spatial data and if you, you know, so if you're like a, I don't know, logistics company or anyone who's who's dealing with driving, transportation, um, et cetera. So, you know, ArcGIS can be really, really helpful. Um, and especially in Power BI, right? So the, the thing with Power BI here is that you can obviously bring in data from other sources as well. So once you have this, you can start plotting. So, you know, this is coming from my Excel sheet, but then I may have Dynamics data and I may have my FNO data and, you know, something else, something else. So all of that can be mishmashed and shown on this map right here. So that's the beauty of Power BI, right? So, uh, so yeah, so anyway, so hopefully this was helpful. And... Um, 
Um, hopefully this made some, you know, bulbs go off and uh, something's churning in your brain. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.